he could not do a woman's voice at all. I can still do the voice. Isn't that weird? I think the phenomenon that you're talking about uh, is one that I have also observed. And one, yeah, it's it's old older people, and it happens to all of us. I'm not saying, like, old people are, you know, we, we all start off young and hip and with it, and we all get sort of uh, ossified a bit in our, our humor tastes. But the thing is, there are certain comedians who, like, once they're established and once they, they have a fan base, they tend to get a free pass. And so it's like, because they're who they are, you tend to regard their jokes as funnier. Uh, and it's just laugh more because they are who they are. And I've noticed this with kind of, although not not really as much as that's about that's about what your brain sounds like. I I think. And I want to I want to do a little caveat here. I do not actually do the drugs. Man, this is like I just want to know what the fuck the mic is doing. Is is the mic is having the orgasms of itself? It is masturbating itself. It is masturbating itself to orgasm right before our very eyes. You see, you see, you know, black black humor is funny as long as the white guy is not completely ripping the black guy. It's funny if the black guy is. It's not really funny the other way around either. It's not really funny if like you got a black guy cussing out the white guy completely. It's more funny if there's sort of a happy medium in between, like Dave Chappelle back in the day, or like Richard Pryor or some of the classic guys. You know, Samford, the Samford and Son, uh, Red Fox. He never really said too much about it. all the white men suck. Uh, not too much. I mean, a little bit, but but yeah, you know, the seventies. The white men did kind of suck. You know, like George Carlin even talked about the white man sucking. He was white. He's all like, yeah, these people are sucking. You know, it's like, and he was angry too. But I, I think uh, observational humor. Yeah, Dean Cook. I don't know what planet he's on. Um, <laughs> not funny. Yeah, the trick to a rape joke is it's got to be ridiculous. Like George Carlin once said, you know, you know, rape isn't funny, but but raping r- Bugs Bunny raping Elmer Fudd, or vice versa, that's funny. Oh, <laughs> so you laughed, you laughed. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's like you know, he's making it, you know, he's making them Jew jokes in there because uh, Charles Schultz probably is Jewish, but uh, maybe not. Maybe he's a nasty. But I don't know. <laughs> but um, see, we can make a joke like that. See the see the trouble is. I, so um, <laughs> and it was like the joke there being like it's like if you take away all the laugh tracks and all that other stuff in the background, you got nothing. It, it, it's the herd mentality as well. You notice that you'll see like a comedy movie with an audience that you latch your ass off in the theater, and you watch it on D- DVD at home later with some of your friends or something, and it's. <laughs> And that happens. And you watch it later on with friends are alone, and you're like, this movie is not half as funny as I remember it because that audience was laughing. If they turned the laugh track off of any current David Letterman, just turn it off, it would be silence. So even even like 15 years ago when I did that sketch, it's like it would be silence. At least, at least I think Saturday Night Live is still filmed in front of an audience, so at least they forced them to laugh a little bit. But they warm the crowd. Yeah, and did you get them laughing? Yeah. Well, is that they uh, warm up the crowd, which is an old it's an old vaudeville trick. Yes. So what what you do is uh, you, you have somebody who's legitimately funny come out and just very quick little burst of comedy, get, get people laughing in about 10, 15 minutes. Then you, when you bring out the main act, everybody's already laughing, and, and laughing feels good, so you want to keep doing it. And when, when once you've started laughing, an audience is, is liable to continue laughing. Again, that's another reason why the celebrity top liner uh, guys like Dane Cook can come out and, and slay an audience. Again, one, this, the audience is probably stoned and drunk. But but also because somebody legitimately funny was probably out there already making them laugh, and so you've you already got that endorphin rush, you're already laughing, and so you're much more inclined to just you know keep doing that. Uh, nothing wrong with that. It's it's a perfectly legitimate uh, comedy strategy. But it's funny um, that what you were talking about that that Letterman um, skit. I I remember watching a skit. Where it wasn't a skit, it was a real incident that happened. It was a improv stand-up club, and this uh, 
one comic was out to warm up the crowd. And so he was t doing a bunch of jokes, and then he kind of stopped halfway through, and he's like, all right, the guy coming after me, uh, I want to give him some payback because he was a real douche to a friend of mine, and uh, he needs to be punished. You know, do you want to help me punish this guy because he's an asshole? And the audience is like, yeah, that would be great. What do we do? And he said, all right, here's the deal. He's going to come out after me. No matter what he says, don't laugh. Treat him as though he is the unfunniest comic you've ever heard. Don't boo. Don't do nothing. Just don't laugh. Give him silence. <laughs> and sure enough, the guy finishes his set, and the other guy comes out. He's like, hey, everybody, who's ready to laugh? Yay. And he starts doing his set, and it's just like crickets chirping. And he keeps going for about like 45 seconds, getting more and more uncomfortable and flustered. And you, you can tell he's thinking, man, I'm really bombing tonight. What's going on? And he starts getting mad at the audience. He's like, so nobody came here to have a good time? What's what's going on here? And he, he just walked off the stage after like about a, a couple of minutes. And, and then he went to go talk to his buddy. He's like, can you believe that shit? What the hell? And the guy's like, actually, that was me. I made that happen because you're an asshole. But... But it's it illustrates a a point, uh, which is that, yeah, momentum is really important. Uh, priming the crowd, and having the right material. Because honestly, I'm willing to bet that if the guy had come out and been legitimately funny anyway, they probably would have started laughing. But that's, and you might th hear that story and think that's a really fucked up thing to do. And I'll tell you what, it is. But here's the thing: stand up comics tend to be really fucked up people they'll be the first yeah. to tell you they are the most emotionally unstable messed yeah, up tormented guy. angsty oh yeah like they're alcoholics and you know it's it's a stereotype and a cliche but uh watch scorsese's king of comedy and kind of paints a picture of the, the comedy world is not necessarily a bunch of fun happy-go-lucky guys sitting around making each other laugh they're actually pretty screwed up and it's one of the ways we validate ourselves is to go on stage tell jokes and the audience laughs and we think yeah I'm special but um worst movies ever King of comedy I don't know. that was one of the that that was the one with Rupert Plimpkin in it or whatever yeah that was amazingly bad that whole movie and then if it was supposed to be that was the intent was to make you literally depressed by the end of the picture it was, if the intent was to make you think everybody in this is loathsome and you want to hate them, then, then yeah, I got it. I get the joke. Because that movie was extremely loathsome. And that was probably kind of the problem with movie 43 as well. Was the, there was nothing funny happening. These And why were they doing this to these stars? And it doesn't really matter if one of them has fake balls in his chin, but what are they going with that? And And why is it funny to have a truth or dare sketch with with like these characters getting so misogynistic and weird that they have plastic surgery done to each other to make each other look all fucked up at the end. How is that funny? It's it's not. And then and then how is it that oh the or evil cartoon cat tries to kill the guy lady so she beats it to death in front of a Girl Scout. It's like what? Or there's like a, a there's like a are these even jokes? There's like <laughs> There's like a leprechaun in the guy's basement, and Johnny Knoxville and his friend are beating it up. And it's like, what? And there's like, and it's like, it's like okay, your Three Stooges movie was actually kind of funny, but apparently you blew it with this one. Um, it was just like, uh, it's like, or the superheroes where one of them walks in and the joke is, Superman, I had an abortion. How the hell is that supposed to be funny? No, it was Wonder Woman. She said Superman had an abortion. It's like, what the hell is that? What? That's not funny. No, abortion is only funny if it's ridiculous. Like, like you have a Star Trek episode where you have you have them say, we got to get rid of Deanna Troy's alien fetus, and you have Worf, and he says, the pregnancy should be terminated for the glory of the Enterprise or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. But, uh, actually, and see, that's, that's another thing, too, is like uh, that – Reminds me of a lot of uh, people doing mashups, like video re-edits of things on YouTube and becoming, so they sort of go viral. Uh, the, there was a guy who was doing Star Trek mashups. He also did this hilarious thing with uh, ALF, Canned Laugh Factory or whatever, whatever's trendy these days. Uh, I don't know. I use SNL because, like I said, I'm from the 80s. Well, I gave up on all this damn comedy that these kids like, you know. But... 
But yeah, but the thing is, I love comedy. I love laughing. And the thing is, I am actually kind of lowbrow. It's not like I'm sophisticated or have like, you know, highfalutin tastes about, you know, I only laugh at, you know, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre's, you know, existentialist, you know. It's like, no, I will totally laugh at stupid, crude stuff. But like I was saying, I still need a joke. Give me a joke. I'll meet you halfway. I'm not that snooty. You know, but uh, these movies like Movie 43 and all these things, they're, they're not even meeting you halfway. They, ha- they have just sort of like this imitation of humor. Well, I guess we got to break, break the map on. Oh, uh, break, off the, break off the map. I wonder if like, so, so what do you think? Well, so what do we think is actually funny? Well, we only mentioned um, old school stuff back in the day, like uh, funny stuff. Uh, uh, Robin Williams used to be hilarious. That it's like it's like yeah, it's 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 a penis joke, but but it's it's Robin Williams in front of an audience. The audience is laughing their butts off about that, you know, the crude humor. And it's like the stuff works. Robin Williams back in the day. Steve Martin was very. It was acquired taste. Some of his stuff was funny. Some of it wasn't. Yes, it was very funny. Uh, the Jerk was his classic movie, and and in, in which he sort of does like an early version of what most offensive video became he's a he's a white guy who thinks he's black and that's the joke and you could not do that today it just wouldn't wouldn't work in the 70s it was hilarious but uh, so what do i find funny uh, um what i can tell you because it's not like i have any surefire theory for what makes me laugh other than um, something, and this is probably just a misfire in my synapses somewhere, but ever since I was even a little kid, um, things going wrong have always struck me as funny. So bloopers, fails. Uh, there's a guy on YouTube who does um, game corruptions, where he runs this al- corruption algorithm through classic video games, and they end up just completely hosed. And, you know, like Donkey Kong, his face is like shooting off into outer space and his arms are like 20 feet long and bananas are exploding, you know, all all over the screen. And it's like stuff like that, for some reason, I will bust a gut. I will laugh so hard that it hurts that I'm almost about to throw up. Stuff like that. Or people, um, again, like bloopers. You know, I can watch classic Star Trek bloopers and and laugh my ass off. Uh, And it's not just that, like, okay, they screwed up the line. It's... uh, in those cases, there, there's kind of a chemistry to it, too, where, like, the the line will be blown, and you can see that everyone's having a good time, you know, about it, that it's, like, people aren't mad necessarily. I never really found anger to be particularly funny, um, although I will say that I think most of the comedy that I laugh at tends to be tinged with anger, that it comes from a, a place of uh, sort of... Uh, well, I, I think the best of satire com- comes from an angry place, um, usually, because affectionate satire is usually just sort of cutesy, and I don't find cutesy particularly funny. Um, you know, where it's like, that's honestly not not to bring religion into it, but that's kind of why like religious joke books aren't funny, because they can't be edgy. They're not allowed to. They're they're the most wholesome, you know, Reader's Digest. You know, you shouldn't drink milk after sixty. After sixty. It would be very sour, wouldn't it? Ha, ha, ha. It's like nobody ever, ever laughs at those jokes. They're not there to be laughed at. They're there to be cute and comforting and sort of imitate humor. But, you know, you you can... I don't know if Reader's Digest is... Another touchstone showing how dated and crunchy and ancient I am. Exactly. And so, like, you know, it'd be the same thing with, like, the comic strips. You read, like, Family Circus, which I think is still around. It's like, that was never funny, nor was it ever even meant to be. It was like, ha-ha, kids, right? You know, and, and the cutesy little kids, you know. Oh, m- mommy, your hugs make me feel like rainbows in my tum-tums. Ah, It's like, nobody laughs at that crap because it's so wholesome. That it's like, but that's ripe for parody. And so because... Personally, like, I have contempt for that, so I'm telling you. There was there was a website a long time ago that got pulled. It was it was called the Dysfunctional Family Circus. And P, they would post one of the strips and then just open the punchline up to the Internet. And, and all of these, like, you know, people would just post, you know. So it would be like, you know, the mother talking to the father and just saying, I'm taking the kids away where you can never hurt them again, you sick bastard. And it's like, okay, so, you know, that's hilarious. 
for a lot of reasons, but I think mainly because, again, there's that sort of anger edge to where you're, you're saying, fuck Family Circus, this shit's not funny. Let's make that, let, let's spin it into dark territory because that is exactly the opposite of what it's meant for. That's funny. Actually, I kind of liked some of Family Circus back in the day. But, uh, but yeah, uh, when I was younger. No, I liked it. Was, it was whimsical. It, I, think, I think that that somebody said that one of those comedian guys, I forget which one you can find out, I guess. Somebody said that humor often comes from the most messed up dramatic times. Humor often comes from stuff that's actually so uh, so realistic enough that it's like, oh, you know, but also, you know, but it makes you laugh uncomfortably. Sometimes that's a different kind of humor. And it's like, it's like, it's like the, the extraordinary people in circumstances type of deal. It's like, it's like uh, extraordinary things happen to ordinary people. That's humor. But drama is, is uh, the opposite. Ordinary things happen to extraordinary people. Yeah, drama, drama is basically a bunch of people not having a good time. And comedy is basically people in the circumstance having a good time. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, but the situation, yeah, you're having a good time watching them not having a good time. That could also happen. Uh, this is satire and, and the whole thing. Comedy is about frustration, you say. Sorry. <laughs> I was saying comedy is about frustration. Not always, but uh, if you look at like comedy movies or comedy stories, the ones that tend to work tend to be about characters who are being frustrated in their goal to I mean every story is about somebody who's trying to achieve a goal but in comedy the frustration is usually spun into just like absurd lengths so if it's if the plot of the movie is just like somebody wants to get home in time for their wedding then I guarantee you most of that movie is going to be shit just blowing up in his face you know like the he he'll he's going to end up like on some cross country rampage you know and and disaster upon disaster will happen because otherwise one, it, there's no story, and two, it's not funny. It's it's funny because he's not getting what he wants. So you know, like 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 I was saying, comedy tends to, and like you were saying too, comedy tends to come from places that could otherwise be dramatic. They've just been spun to kind of absurd degrees, and that to me is is what comedy really is. It's, it's uh, we're, we're sort of laughing at at life's frustrations and and. Thing, things that otherwise bother us or, or are upsetting to us, you know, a lot of a lot of great comedy comes out of dark times. You know, the more screwed up things get, the more we need to laugh. It's like it's like the, for instance, um, yeah, it's like the most offensive video guys who was we was ripping off blatantly. Um, the the thing that makes it funny that like the wholesome peanut characters who tell wholesome nice things and do wholesome things. Are suddenly talking ghetto jive street trash to each other. See, that's funny because you got them talking like they're black brothers, and they ain't. And you got, <laughs> and it's like Charlie Brown and Lucy and Sally and Peppermint Patty. Of course, some of that stuff was screwed up too, like indirectly, because like you know, often the message would be really strange, like kid logic message, like you know, the Great Pumpkin. He's just like. Oh, oh! Your your belief system was wrong, or something, or whatever. The message is like like an odd metaphor somehow. He still believes in the great pumpkin, but he's still pissed off at him. It was absurd faith, yeah. And and it's like it's like uh, in the Valentine one and the New Year's one and all that. All about frustration, but but it's but it was like comedy that was wholesome. I don't think there was anything. He says, of course, Robot Chicken rips that off. All the time. Some of this stuff is brilliant, but some of the stuff is clearly ripping off other people's stuff. And it's like, even Cal Cat and Mark's cards. And it's like, uh, wow, it's just pretty amazing because not that much of our stuff is out there. I don't know how they're getting it. Um, <laughs> I went on the same wavelength. We should be writing for them. And, and, and it's like, it's like, like we can make the little black humor jokes and stuff like that and say, ooh, the retard and all that stuff. and Because like, well, we can get away with that because we went to high school with a bunch of weird people. We can get away with that a, li a little bit. But uh, and we can make like a joke about autism or ADD because we have that. 
or have that, know of that, and that's okay. Um, I think a lot of these, I wonder if a lot of like stuff these days is like, is like, is like the attention span of the modern audience is just so ridiculously boom. I got to have it right now. Boom. Here's the ending. Here's the ending. Boom, 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 boom. That it's like they can't sit down and sit still for a minute to hear the joke leading up to the punchline, leading up to the, to the end of the story. They got to have it right now, right quick or, or, or not at all. Uh, and it's like well, a lot of these, a lot of these fake black comedies trying to be funny, and they aren't. Now, I, I wonder when the last time there was a really, really funny black comedy was. It's been a while, you know. And I thought the Baba Shop movie was hilarious. I thought that was very well done. The Cedric the Entertainer and some of the other ones. The Baba Shop was stupid except for one scene, and it's like it's like Queen Latifah just plays herself. But that's okay, I guess, because she's kind of bitchy. But, like, it's like none of those Friday... I guess the first Friday movie was vaguely funny, but none of the other ones were. Come on. And, and like, and like... <laughs> but that one about the stoners that that, that, uh, that they did, that that was funny. Um, the, the uh, Dave Chappelle's first movie, that was Half Bake, that was funny. There was some funny shit in that. Uh, Eddie Murphy's Delirious was funny, but Raw was stupid. Uh, Raw was just bad. It's just awful. Um, Trading Places was funny. Uh, yeah, you know, we had Billy Hughes Cop, the original, it was funny. Uh, I, and then they had a lot of, some other other movies they did back in the day where it was like, it was like they didn't know they were making a comedy halfway through the movie and they like lost it. Like classic example. Classic example was the world according to Garp. Where this was a funny movie until about forty-five minutes, until about forty-five minutes into the movie, to which point it became. After, after, after which time it became. A very dreary, dark drama, and ended with everybody practically dead or something. Well, they weren't dead, but, but it was like, what the hell? It's like, and then they then they got this new thing called dramedy. Which is stupid because it's either comedy or it's a drama. You cannot have both in the same context during the same joke. That just throws it completely off. Uh, you can uh, now now the satire of Bill Hubbertep. Some of that was funny, and, and uh, you can do that. Hub, Bubba Hotep, Bubba Hotep. It should be it should be called that. It should be a black movie about a dude that dubsteps, and he's like and he's like he's like forty five. But he thinks he's awesome, and he like, and then like halfway through, he like he like hurts his back or something, and then it becomes like some ridiculous like I don't know I don't know where I'm going with this, but a black dude playing Polly Shaw, <laughs> and he gets in the rap battle later on after overcoming adversity. <laughs> I think I came up with the next uh, Polly Shaw movie. Didn't mean to, but uh, but it's like um. It's like some of these guys just, uh, well, yeah, nothing but trouble. That movie was so unfunny; it was amazing. Ishtar was was uh, was not on the list of hundred worst movies of the year. It should have been on the list of hundred worst movies of fifty years. That movie was boring. <laughs> See, I've never seen Ishtar. I remember renting it as a kid and uh, sort of tuning it out about thirty minutes in. I, it's one of those ones I kind of want to revisit just because, like. It's kind of had a critical reappraisal, in, like in recent years, kind of like Heaven's Gate, which was considered a total disaster. But if you watch the the original director's cut, it's actually not that bad of a movie. But um, to to uh, you, you were mentioning like uh, black comedy and and stuff. Uh, I, I I think that the distinction isn't so much whether it's black or white comedy; it's what's the intent of of the movie. So it's like. The you know a, a lot of what we consider like the classic black comedies you know from the seventies you know uh, Richard Pryor's concert films and and some some of the movies up, up through the eighties were addressing a lot of racial turmoil that was happening in the culture so it was kind of comedy was a, w a safe way of exploring that tension uh, and it's certainly still there today I mean only an idiot would tell you racism is dead it's still very much there. But it's it, the the culture itself is different. So, like, 
doing a movie where it's like, you know, he's black and his partner is white. Wow. You know, it's like, okay, that, that doesn't fly today just because there's no novelty there. It's, there's, there's no, there's no edge to it. Um, but, uh, more, more broadly, uh, the concept of whether it's okay for like us to tell, you, you know, most offensive video style jokes or whatever, I want to make the distinction that there, there's a difference between using offensive material literally and using it to skewer the viewpoint uh, that that is behind it. So if if you make a, a joke that is completely over the top and racist, it you can do that in a way that makes it clear that you're making fun of racists. That you're not saying, yeah, black people are are dumb or. You know, so like the most offensive video guys are, are really good at this. They they nail that sort of like, you know, they're sort of wallowing in all of these stereotypes, but they're clearly sending them up. And that's that's different than if some clan guy was like trying to do a similar kind of thing where it was just like, hey, I hate black people. And, you know, all this. that would be the opposite of funny because his intent would be not funny, but born of of just pure spite and ugliness. And that's not funny. But making fun of that guy for being that way, that's funny. And you can use, you know, any tool in your arsenal to, you know, you can be, there's there's no sacred cows. You can be as offensive and tasteless and, you know, make, you know, you, you can reference anything. But again, it comes all back around to like the fart thing. It's like, okay, that's the starting point. What's the joke? You've got to have a joke. Otherwise, you're just making everyone needlessly uncomfortable. So anyway, that, that pretty much... Uh, brings it around to to my genital theories on on comedy, uh, and yes, hanging from the chin like Hugh Jackman picking up a paycheck, I guess. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna <coughs> I'm gonna have to get going shortly. But uh, what um, <laughs> Halle Berry. But but it's like it's like yeah, just referencing a joke doesn't make it funny. Like, like there was one of those, uh, I think it was one of the scary movies, referenced Million Dollar Baby, which is not itself a scary movie, or or threw in the Tom Cruise thing with Oprah. Well, that was scary. All out with the eye candy, and the car ride is really good. But, yeah, I don't know what in the hell made them think Dane Cook was good for kids. What planes play right now? The sequel to Planes. It made enough, but it certainly didn't get the the same kind of critical acclaim that like Pixar or even uh, D- Disney does much better these days. They were kind of shitty for a while, but you know what's an awesome movie? The Lego oh, the Lego! Mo- I love the Lego Movie. I just saw that like a awesome weekend ago. Superhero. Yeah, it was it was pretty damn awesome. It was kind of one of the. One of those kind of stealth movies that, like, you, you wouldn't necessarily think was going to actually be good, but it really blew me away. It was, it was really well done. Uh, anyway, it's getting kind of late, and uh, I got to get on the road. Well, I had that Lego. I had that Lego space set back in the day. I had that whole thing. I had the Mar- the moon landing one and everything, and it was in trans. It was in there. All that stuff was from the Lego space set and the original first stuff before they built all that other stuff. and. Made cars and vehicles and stuff. Yeah, it's in the trans, the old trans movies, the space set with the, uh, you know, the little moon base and the little lander and all that stuff. I don't know that So I was the guy going spaceship. Yeah, I was that guy. <laughs> spaceship, spaceship, spaceship. Cause everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Okay. Okay, or oh, something. Well, hello, Super Lover. I didn't say much, but we in this tool go. And now, we just gonna go now. So, something, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the TV. And then that showed, like, when Jay Leno had his last show, they showed, like, what was allegedly, like, bloopers from 20 years of Jay Leno. But most of them were not bloopers, they were just clip sketches of different crazy shit that happened on the stage. Like the like the the chair catches fire, or they dump the stuff on the guy, or dump the cereal on the guy, or none of that stuff was bloopers. It was all just it was all just sketches. That's why they weren't funny. Yeah, 
Anyways, I ain't sticking. I'm going to now. Yes.